Okay, we are now going to look at hardware, storage, and memory. So first I want to talk about memory, random access memory specifically, or RAM. Uh, every modern computer has memory, from your smartphone to your desktop, everything has some kind of memory. Uh, it's typically volatile. What does that mean? It means that it loses its information when it loses power. The things that are stored in it are sort of temporary. Every application uses it. When you fire up uh, any kind of program, a web browser, uh, iTunes, uh, music software, a video player, anything, the information is stored in memory as it's being worked on. So more is better to a point. Uh, eventually you get to a place where your computer can't make use of it uh, because it has addresses outside of the range that the computer can see, but that's really getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, modern memory is typically measured in gigabytes, not megabytes or kilobytes. Typically, uh, even you know, iPhones and Android phones and even not smartphones, feature phones as they're called, will have gigabytes of memory. Just a note, it is pronounced gigabyte with a hard G like growl or go, not a soft G like gosh or groan or gigawatt. As in 1.21 gigawatts from Back to the Future. No? Nobody? Okay. So a note on sizes. A byte is made of 8 bits, and a bit is, of course, the basic unit of information in a computer. It's a 1 or a 0. It doesn't get any smaller than that in a computer. It's based off of a physical switch. Um, it's an electronic switch, but it's an actual physical thing, and there's a whole mess load of those in your computer. 8 bytes is a double, which leads to a wonderful joke of... Um, Eight bytes walk into a bar, look at the bartender, and say, make us a double. 124, 1,024 bytes is a kilobyte. It's sometimes written as 1,000 bytes, but that's not quite right because it's typically measured in binary. But, you know, that's as the sizes go up, the distinction gets less and less. So um, 1,000 bytes is a kilobyte, abbreviated as capital KB. That's dis different from kilobits, which is capital K lowercase b, but we'll talk about that more when we talk about internet speeds. 1024 to the second power bytes, or 1,024,000 bytes is a megabyte, or capital MB. 1024 to the 3, as you may have guessed, or 1,073,741,824 bytes is a gigabyte. Capitalized GB is the abbreviation. So back to memory. Uh, think of it like scratch paper. It's what your computer uses when it's working through problems. As it's processing information, you know, whenever you click the mouse or press a key on a keyboard or anything, it processes this, it puts it into memory, and that's how it gets used. Um, more or less, some things are small enough, some instructions are small enough that it doesn't have to write them to memory. Sort of think of it as the difference between adding up 2 plus 2 in your head and solving an advanced calculus problem. One of them you're going to need paper. Uh, so computers load things they are working on into memory. So as it's working on something, as it's processing each step, it gets stuck in memory. It's okay if it fills up, it happens all the time. Even on a system like mine with 8 gigs of memory in it, you're going to run out of room eventually. And so then things have to kind of get swapped out. So if you have too little memory, things get swapped out all the time, and that means things will start to slow down. So not enough memory is like using sticky notes for scratch paper. Sticky notes on a tiny desk. You keep They keep covering each other and you keep having to stick them somewhere like say in a binder. So each page in this binder has different notes and in order to access those notes you have to go and grab that particular page, that chunk of information. That's actually a really apt analogy because that's it's there's a system called paging the quick and dirty summary is computer will load a certain amount of memory from uh, someplace else into random access memory and it will try and use that to process your requests and in order to try and speed things up the computer basically tries to guess which page to use next this is a, a really oversimplification but this is pretty much how it works um, so grabbing the wrong page leads to a fault a page fault this is not a problem and it happens all the time you never really see anything about it because basically it just means that it's looking for something in memory and it can't find it a seg fault you may have heard of is something else and it's bad but these mostly happen when you're writing code 
mostly. Some code may have problems and these may crop up. They're incredibly rare, but even these aren't really that big of a deal. Typically, a stick of RAM or a RAM module looks like this. I might actually have some laying around. If I do, I will hold that up too. Um, just for more detail, this is what a uh, stick of RAM kind of looks like. For uh, This is uh, for a desktop. Um, you can see a ruler here, centimeters to inches too. So you can kind of get a feel for the size of it. This is really old RAM. This is from, I think, the first computer I built, maybe the second one. You can't really tell, but it's um, burnt, like right here. It shorted out in the system and actually the computer caught on fire. This is laptop RAM. You can see next to the ruler, it's kind of small. This is pretty new. This was what came in my MacBook, but I swapped it out for more. So now let's talk about storage, also called hard disk space or a hard disk, a hard disk drive, or disk storage, or abbreviated oftentimes as capital HDD, or just storage. They are all they all work. They're all basically the same. And those kind of look like this this is a hard drive without the cover on it usually they have a cover on this top piece this is a really powerful neodymium rare earth magnet there's another one underneath it and it basically these use magnetic impulses to encode magnetic signatures on this disc if any of you remember cassette tapes that's just kind of how those worked also it put a magnetic signature on a piece of cellophane with basically rust on it um, this is also very similar to how records work, only with records it's a physical pit. With these it's an um, electronic signature. Same thing with a CD. With a commercial CD they use a laser to burn pits and valleys into the CD and that encodes basically chains of ones and zeros. This is the same thing. It uses a magnetic impulse to encode essentially chains of ones and zeros on these really super super shiny platters if you ever get a chance to see a hard drive opened up I recommend it it's kind of neat um, you can also use these as hand mirrors if you really want uh, it's really really expensive hand mirrors there are also um, solid state drives which don't have this disk inside they work similarly to RAM only they are not volatile if any of you have a thumb drive, it's basically a giant one of those, but they're incredibly fast and currently very expensive. In the future, I think this particular type of drive will go away uh, for a number of reasons. The solid state drives are faster, they will scale larger, so right now these will be bigger, but in the long term, like more storage, but in the long term, I think solid state drives will grow bigger because even now you can get a 100 gigabyte plus size one that they're, they're sized as a, a laptop hard drive. Very, very powerful stuff. And they don't use rare earth materials like these do, so they're a little bit better for the environment as well. This is a hard drive with a cover on. The one in the slide, the cover is off so you can see the platters underneath. This is out of a desktop. This one is, this is one terabyte. This is a one terabyte hard drive. I was using this in a NAS, so I had two of these working together, so I had two terabytes of storage, but I've since replaced uh, this one with a two terabyte drive, so I have one as a backup to the other. Anyway, there's a, a ruler so you can see the size difference. This is a laptop hard drive. Again, comparison's sake, next to the ruler. Um, it's kind of smaller. So storage. Typically modern hard drives hold can hold upwards of two terabytes. Um, typically you'll see them in the 900 gigabytes to one terabyte range. 1024 to the fourth, one trillion, ninety nine billion, five hundred eleven million, six hundred twenty seven thousand, seven hundred seventy six bytes. Often abbreviated as capital TB or 1000 gigabytes. This is a lot of space. A uh, typical HD movie is about 2 gigs ish, more or less. So you can do the math on that. That's 500 movies on one 1000 gig on one 1 terabyte drive. That's that's just an insane amount of storage. Uh, let's see. Some systems write to and read from a hard drive when they're accessing memory. So basically as it's accessing memory or programs, it'll write stuff to a hard drive as it needs access to more memory. Uh, if your hard drive fills up, it becomes harder for the computer to process things because of that. 
Think of it as the binder getting really full and it's being harder and harder to find a place to put sticky notes. Basically, the, the thing is you use RAM because it's really fast. You can access stuff there really quickly. It's sort of like having your post-it notes arrayed in front of you on your desk. But when you run out of room for these, you can just go ahead and stick those in the binder. And the binder is essentially your hard drive. Running out of room is less of an issue on a Unix-based system, and FYI, Macs uh, from OS X on are Unix-based because they use a dedicated section of the hard disk to swap out data. They call this a swap disk. Windows systems historically did not do this. Uh, this is what led to, if you guys remember ever having to defragment a disk and like after a while your system would start getting buggy and would slow down, this is one of the reasons why. Modern Windows systems, sort of everything after XP, don't really suffer from this as much. They've got a really good handle on that now. The, the philosophical difference was on a Unix system you had to dedicate some large amount of space for swap space. On a Windows system you got to use more of your hard drive. So it was uh, just a philosophical difference. Um, neither one is really better than the other. I lean more towards the swap disk just because it keeps things neater. Uh, that's really the quick and dirty lowdown on uh, storage and memory. Um, we'll probably get into that more in depth as the semester rolls on, but ultimately the big thing to keep in mind is that uh, more RAM is better, more storage space is pretty much better, but you know within certain limits most people don't need two terabytes worth of storage. Just for reference, I use a two terabyte network attached storage system to keep multimedia files on. I have uh, like I'll scan my or rip my Blu-rays from an actual disc to a, a digital file and store those on there so I can, you know, if I want to watch a movie, I don't have to get up and put a disc in the PlayStation because I'm lazy. Um, but I have, you know, the entire Marvel movie collection, a bunch of Disney movies and everything on there, and I'm not even using a quarter of the space. So that anyway, terabytes are huge. Basically, hard uh, hard disk space is used to store things permanently. It's also used to offload information when a computer is working on something. Memory is used if you need to access something quickly. It's very, very, very fast, where it, as hardware or hard drives are relatively slow. These are that's just things to kind of keep in mind. Okay, so to summarize, uh, memory is temporary and fast. Storage is permanent and slow. So a mnemonic to try and keep those straight, uh, if you're trying to decide which is which, just think storage and slow both start with the letter S.